It's pretty windy up here, so I had to wrap my ears because they're getting cold. <laughs> so if you're wondering about the funny headset, that's what's going on. Number 43. The softest of all things overrides the hardest of all things. Only nothing can enter into no space. Hence I know the advantages of non ado. Few things under heaven are as instructive as the lessons of silence, or as beneficial as the fruits of non ado. From the Tao Te Ching. Number 22. Bend and you will be whole. Curl and you will be straight. Keep empty and you will be filled. Grow old and you will be renewed. Have little and you will gain. Have much and you will be confused. Therefore, the sage embraces the one and becomes a pattern to all under heaven. He does not make a show of himself, hence he shines. He does not justify himself. Hence he becomes known. Does not boast of his ability. Hence he gets credit. He does not brandish his success. Hence he endures. Does not compete with anyone. Hence no one can compete with him. Indeed, the ancient saying, Bend and you will remain whole, is no idle word. Nay, if you really attained wholeness, everything will flock to you. Number 24. One on tiptoe cannot stand. One astride cannot walk. One who displays himself does not shine. One who justifies himself has no glory. One who boasts of his own ability has no merit. One who parades his own success will not endure. In Tao, these things are called unwanted food and extraneous growths, which are loathed by all things. Hence, a man of Tao does not set his heart upon them. Number 24. Number 4. The Tao is like an empty bowl, which in being used can never be filled up. Fathomless, it seems to be the origin of all things. It blunts all sharp edges. It unties all tangles. It harmonizes all lights. It unites the world into one whole, hidden in the deeps, yet it seems to exist forever. I, don't know, I do not know whose child it is. It seems to be the common ancestor of all, the father of things. I really like this one a lot. Number six. The spirit of the fountain dies not. It's called the mysterious feminine. The dory of the mysterious feminine is called the root of heaven and earth. Lingering like gossamer, it only has a hint of existence. And yet when you draw upon it, it is inexhaustible. Number six. 14. Number 14. Look at it, but you cannot see it. Its name is formless. Listen, but you cannot hear it. Its name is soundless. Grasp at it, but you cannot get it. Its name is incorporeal. These three attributes are unfathomable. Therefore, they fuse into one. Its upper side is not bright, its underside not dim. Continually, the unnameable moves on, 
until it returns beyond the realm of things. We call it the formless form, the imageless image. We call it the indefinable and unimaginable. Confront it and you do not see its face. Follow it and you will not see its back. Yet equipped with this timeless Tao, you can harness present realities. To know the origins is initiation into the Tao. Number 14. The five colors blind the eye. The five tones deafen the ear. The five flavors cloy the palate. Racing and hunting madden the mind. Rare goods tempt men to do wrong. Therefore, the sage takes care of the belly and not the eye. He prefers what is within to what is without. Number 12. Number 11. 30 spokes converge upon a single hub. It is on the whole, in the center, that the use of the cart hinges. We make a vessel from a lump of clay. It is the empty space within the vessel that makes it useful. We make doors and windows for a room. But it is these empty spaces that make the room livable. Thus, while the tangible has advantages, it is the intangible that makes it useful. Number 11. 